And hey, don't judge me if Abby outpicks me. She's a better guitar player. All right, so here we go. <laughs> I might change on the fly here because I do have Abby with me, but what we're going to work on this session is uh, picking out melody. And I've, I've sort of paid attention to all of you as you played this weekend. Everybody seems to have a pretty good grasp of um, finding simple melodies. So um, I'm going to touch on uh, that, but hopefully um, go a little bit more in depth and, and maybe there'll be some light bulb moments here. Also, I might go into a little bit more of how to, Im uh, how to incorporate some improvisation into that, So, because um, Abby would be great to help me with that. The other thing is the scale that you're playing out of only has seven notes. Any major scale only has seven notes, so anytime you're searching for a melody, there's only seven notes to choose from. <laughs> the important thing, though, is that um, you know this scale. The reason for that is otherwise you're searching the whole fretboard for a melody where if you know the scale you can only search from seven notes and it makes it much faster. So many people were saying they would like to figure out a way to find melody quickly. Well that's a great tool. A scale gives you seven notes to choose from and that eliminates the whole fretboard from the the picture. So um, Everyone here know your major G scale? Yes? Good. No? Well, that's okay. You play by ear. <laughs> um, yeah. So just to, just to clarify what I'm saying. If, for instance, this scale right here. I just played eight notes. And if I was trying to find the melody of Mary Had a Little Lamb, I wouldn't have to search anywhere but those particular notes. See what I mean? Where if I played just by ear, I might be searching all the way around trying to find my notes. 
And maybe you felt this before where when you're searching, you almost forget sometimes where you came from, but eventually you get it, right? That, so that's not a problem. But um, if you know the scale, it gives you seven notes to use your ear with as opposed to, I don't know, uh, where's Bert? How many notes are on this scale, <laughs> on this fretboard? <laughs> a lot of them. There's a lot of notes to choose from. So it really simplifies the process. So um, that, that is just another thing to think about as you, um, as you pull melodies. Now, let me see about some um, application things here. So who here, uh, when they're pulling from a melody or trying to collect a break from a melody, um, has a, sh a particular struggle that they're trying to figure out an answer for? Like, like they have trouble with one particular thing. Maybe we can talk about that. Anybody? Where to start? Okay. So let me see if I could clarify an answer for that. Um, have you ever heard the, um, them say, as long as you start your break right and end your break right, everything in between really doesn't matter? I would say that that adage is definitely true. Um, as long as you have a good intro and good outro, that's the important thing. So that's where I would start. Um, making sure that I, I've got those two key points. And then there's always some sort of um, characteristic about a song that makes it what it is, right? So I would pull that out. Just like an artist would say, there's this characteristic I want to pull out of this portrait because that's what makes this person what it is. If you can get that part, you know, like maybe there's an... If you're playing a song and there's a F in it, you're not going to want to miss the F. That's what makes that song, right? So if you get that in there, your break with those three elements really would have some uh, resemblance of the song, right? Even if you were just playing all licks, as long as you got those key elements, um, you would fool everybody into thinking you knew the song. And, and um, I would say a lot of musicians are guilty of that, of just fooling people into thinking they know the song because of, of those two things. Good intro, good outro, and then the... Um, the uh, characteristic but then the melody of the song um, you can build uh, at least several measures of the first part of the melody have you ever listened to a guitar break and they'll play maybe two or three measures of somewhat melody and then they'll stray off and do some nonsense that's very common and so if you can get the first section of melody in your head and then play that and then start going off into your licks um, and your good ending, that's key, then uh, I, that would be where I would start on any lead break. And then if you mess it up completely, try again next time, <laughs> <laughs> right? There's always gonna be a second chance and uh, we've all done that, <laughs> except for Abby, she doesn't mess them up. So but. Like when you guys did Rebecca, you know, the second, it got fancier, right? So how did you guys work that up? That's a great question. So um, maybe you want to answer first. Do you have a good? Um, uh, sometimes I'll just work to a different position just because I haven't played there, like a different octave. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll bounce back and forth from different octaves, different parts of the neck. And um, So yeah, that's true too. If it's a lot of times you can play the same idea in a different place and it sounds different, right? So you might have a, a G run. And then another G run, or done. Those are all three the same thing, but three different octaves, right? And if you do them in different places, again, you're fooling people, kind of. If you, you can't do it with a G run, everybody knows it's a G run. <laughs> but if you do a different lick, you might be able to get away with that. Three different places. Knowing your scales in first position, second, and third positions. It would. Yeah, but, and then also by association, I think that you were probably headed there just knowing um, particular uh, sets of notes. It, we would call them licks or some, something that fits a particular chord structure. You, you have a, a set of notes that's four measures that you know fits one particular chord progression, so you can use that over in an area if you see hey this song wraps up with a uh, one five one and you have a uh, four measure deal that 
fits there, you use, just use that. You don't have to think it up, you know. Um, but yeah, different positions so would be great. Do you use the fretboard in terms of scales, or do you use like positions? Or I see it in shapes. shapes yeah. mm -hmm. I'm a shapes and colors type of person. So I actually, before I ever learned scales, I was um, just playing, I guess, using my ear. And then later on, like 15 years later, I started learning scales and I was like, that makes sense now. Like everything came, so it's a good thing to learn scales, but I, I was doing it before I learned scales. And hey, don't judge me if Abby outpicks me. She's a better guitar player. All right, so here we go.